Undertakers, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Now today we're going to make some brisket. If you watched my last video, in that one I showed you how to trim the brisket and how to separate the point from the flat. And now in this video I'm going to cook the flat for you. So if you don't know how to do that, go watch the previous video to learn how to trim it and everything. That's the hard part. Now today the cooking part, that's the easy part. It's time consuming. This is going to take... Now when I cook the whole brisket with the point attached, it's about a 7-8 hour cook. Today might go a little quicker since I don't have the point attached to this, we're just doing the flat. But essentially all we're going to do is season it up, put it on the smoker, that's going to do all the work. We just have to sit around and wait to eat. So once you have your meat and it's all trimmed up, we're going to cook it fat side down. So we're going to start with the fat side up and we're going to give that side a nice little coating of some seasoning here. Now when it comes to seasoning, use whatever you like. I'm using some Traeger rub, it's like an all-purpose rub. It's pretty good, I like it. And depending on where you're from or what kind of brisket you're going for, you may want to you know, use a different rub. If you have a favorite one, use it. If you want to do just something simple like a Texas style brisket, all you need for that is salt and pepper. You just put a lot of salt and pepper on each side and you're done. Okay, flip that over. Alright, clean hands after flipping. <clears throat> now, if you don't have a favorite rub or you don't know what to put on it and if you just wanted to go with some salt and pepper, just do it that way. You don't have to put anything on here. If you just want to cook this piece of meat the way it is and just have a big beefy piece of meat, do it that way. So we've got both sides full of rub. Now some guys will put a binder on their meat. In other words, they'll rub some oil or something to make the rub stick to the meat. We're not going to do that. It's kind of a waste. If you just let the rub sit on the meat just for a few minutes, it'll stay there. The juice from the meat will grab the rub and hold on to it. And so that's all we're going to do. Also, before cooking, some guys will inject their brisket. We're not going to do that today. I've done it in the past. I'll probably do a video on it in the future too. But for today, we're just going to keep it simple. And I'm not going to do any injection. I've got the smoker heated up to 225. We're going to put this meat on there just as it is, fat side down. You know, it's not going to be on a tray, it's not going to be covered or anything. It's just going to sit on there just like this. And it'll probably take three or four hours. We'll keep an eye on it. Once it reaches an internal temp of 160, then we're going to take it off the smoker. And I'll show you the next step after that. And uh, then we'll cook it again until it reaches about, about 204 on the inside. Pull it, let it rest, and then we'll finally get to eat, which will be seven or eight hours from now. So like I say, this part's pretty simple. We've rubbed both sides. Now we're going to go get it on the smoker. All right, you beautiful little piece of meat. We will see you in a few hours. All right, let's get that off and go to step two. Okay, now I know I said we were shooting for an internal temp of 160, and you saw me a minute ago when I pulled this on the smoker, it was at 155. It's been on the smoker for about 4 hours and 15 minutes. The last, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or so, it's taken me from 52 to 55. So it's, it's sort of stalled, which is fine. It happens. Every piece of meat's different. So actually, it's sort of a good thing in this video that it happens so you can see at the end that it's not going to matter. You just go through it. You know, you just keep cooking, keep cooking. Eventually, it'll get moving again. So it did sort of stall, but four and a half hours was long enough and 155 was close enough. Now at this point, depending on who's making the brisket, there's an argument out there for different ways to do it. Some guys just leave it the way it is, they don't wrap it at all. Some guys wrap it in butcher paper and they'll swear, oh, you have to do it in butcher paper. Other people wrap it in foil and they say, no, don't be stupid, you have to use foil, that's the only way to do it. Honestly, all three ways work. It's just a matter of your personal taste and, you know, as you cook a brisket, you may prefer one over the other just for, you know, the, the ease of use for you. So do whatever works best for you. Now, in our case today, I am using foil because we're going to add some broth to this. Now, I have this set up. I've got a cookie sheet down here and it's, you know, about that big. So we're just going to add our broth. I'm going to try not to pour it over the meat so we don't wash all our rub off. But we're going to add, oh, this will probably end up being a cup or so. So as long as it doesn't overflow is all that really matters. Okay. 
Some of that might have been a little bit more. Like I say, just eyeball it. This doesn't, doesn't have to be a strict measurement. And now we're just going to seal it up in the foil. And there you go. So he's wrapped up in there nice and tight. Got some beef broth in there. Now, back on the smoker, it's still set at 225. And then theoretically, this will take another three to four hours. Now, since it's stalled, I'm hoping that by taking it off of the heat and then we're now wrapping it, putting it back on, that should get it back to where it needs to be. So we'll just keep an eye on it. No peeking, no checking on it. Just put it on there, let it go. I won't even try to put the thermometer in here and test this. I'll give this at least three hours before I even try that. So now that it's ready, back it goes. Time to pull it and let it rest. Okay, so we hit our target temp. I pulled it out of there. It was a little over. We were shooting for 204. It hit 207. And it took a little more than three hours, about three hours and ten minutes or so to hit that. Then I brought it in. It sat here rested on the oven. And I let it, I kept it wrapped in the foil. And it sat and rested for about 45 minutes or so. So now we're going to slice into it and see what it's going to taste like. Now, some people will pull theirs out and they'll leave it wrapped in the foil and they'll put it in some sort of insulated box or a cooler and they'll let it sit and rest for a couple of hours. So you've got room to play with there. But for, for us, for this, I think a half hour is going to be plenty over the 45 minutes. That's more than enough. I would let it rest at least probably a half hour before I cut into it. So just something to keep in mind when you're planning on when your dinner is going to be ready or when you're going to actually eat the, eat the food. Just keep in mind you want that, that resting time. So I'll take some slices off of here and we'll see how good we did. Okay, so to slice this, you want to cut it against the grain. So as you can look, you can see, here you can see the, the grains running this way. So we want to start right here at this little point and kind of work our way back here. And obviously it's going to be a little more done here at the edge. So generally when you pick a piece up, if you bounce it on your finger, it should bend, but it shouldn't break. And you can see the meat just started coming apart. You should be able to pull it. It should be just a little elastic like that. So that's perfect. Nice little piece right there. Let's give this a try. Okay, so after slicing some up, I got my little piece to try. I already snuck a little bite. Oh, but that's good. Tender. Has really good flavor being in that beef stock really added some extra flavor to this mm -mm. not a lot of work involved but a lot of time so we had about a seven and a half hour cook time plus the half hour 45 minute wait which is pretty typical for a brisket now once you have it and once it's done and once you slice it how do you eat it you could eat it plain like I just did you could put some horseradish on it. You could save, if you put the, the broth in there, you could save that and dip it into the juice. That would be good. You could put barbecue sauce on it. Don't ever put steak sauce on it. Don't buy it. Don't use it. Ugh. Put something better on it. It's worth it. You put steak sauce on something nasty to cover it up the grossness. So anyway, so don't be intimidated. If you've never made a brisket, it's easy to do. If you have made it before, there's lots of different ways you can do it. Here's another one, so add this to your arsenal. But give it a try. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.